When creating abilities for your fantastical series filled with magic and special powers, you have to be very careful not to make something too powerful that everybody has access to, and that if characters don't use it in the appropriate moment, people will just be scratching their heads because, well, you could have just done that and saved yourself. Why wouldn't you do that? One of those problematic jutsus is the body flicker technique, which is a very widespread jutsu in the Naruto series. It's a D-rank ninjutsu, meaning that any mildly experienced Genin would have access to it. Not very difficult to learn that. The jutsu works as follows. The user of the body flicker technique can move short to long distances at an almost untraceable speed. To an observer, it appears as if the user has teleported. It is accomplished by using chakra to temporarily vitalize the body and move at extreme speeds. The amount of chakra required depends on the overall distance and elevation between the user and the intended destination. So this is essentially teleportation, but you're actually physically moving there. It's just that you're so fast, people cannot even see you doing that. And occasionally ninjas can use a puff of smoke to disguise their movements and the direction they're going. Other times they can use other elements as well, such as Garo when he used sand and so on and so forth. But the thing is, everyone has access to this extremely powerful ability and nobody seems to be using it when it's very important. Now, it is stated that this jutsu isn't easy to master for combat situations, so much so that Shisui, the one who actually managed to do so, was known as Shunshin no Shisui or Shisui the Teleporter because he used the body flicker technique to amp his speed to absurd levels mid-combat and use the body flicker to actually fight which is something almost unheard of. This jutsu is mostly used to traverse long distances or just run away from the battlefield. It's not something you can use mid-battle very often because it's hard to control, it requires some very good precision in your chakra, and it's understandable. You don't want every single one of your ninjas using this jutsu during your fights because first they would get pretty boring and second it would be very difficult to balance things out. But even if you take out of the equation those who can use it mid-fight, the other applications for this jutsu are also absolutely insane. First, you can travel to almost any location in a very short time, and of course there's a chakra limitation to it, the more you have to travel, the more chakra you have to spend on the body flicker, but people like Naruto who have nigh infinite chakra, they shouldn't be worried about traveling because they can just, you know, I'm just gonna body flicker to the other side of the world and come back because I have enough chakra to do that 10 times over. Over. And also the ability to flee any sticky situation you're in is just absolutely amazing. We see characters using this jutsu time and time again to get out of sticky situations or travel long distances whenever it's convenient. For instance, when Orochimaru and Kabuto had to retreat from the three-way deadlock, they just uh, disappeared. Body flicker away. Also, when Orochimaru, Kabuto and Sasuke had to flee from their hideout in the Tenchi Bridge arc, they they turned into fire and disappeared, body flicker away. When Hanzo had to flee from Nagato's soul-consuming dragon who was destroying Hanzo's army, what did he do? He body flickered away. When Kisame and Itachi were fighting in the leaf village against Gai, Kakashi, Asuma and Kurunai, and Itachi decided they had to retreat, what did they do? They body flicker away. When Haku collects quote-unquote dead Zabuza after the first Kakashi vs Zabuza fight, he body flickers away. Now granted, he wasn't in danger in that situation, but it was very important for Haku to get out of there quickly so that he didn't arouse any suspicion. But you get what I mean, right? The body flicker is just a get out of jail free card for any given time where characters have to get away from a certain situation in the story. Wouldn't it be more interesting if they actually had to think about a creative solution as to how to escape? Instead of just poof, I'm gone, I body flickered away, and there's literally nothing you can do about that because reasons. Now have you ever realized that nobody ever attempts to chase body flickers with their own body flicker? Now okay, you can say that you don't really see exactly where they went, but somebody as skilled as Kakashi for example with a Sharingan or the Sun in like Tsunade and Jiraiya, they would probably have an idea and then give chase to the body flickers that were leaving the battlefield and fleeing 
seeing them, but of course, it's for plot reasons. It's for the convenience of the story, and sometimes you have to do that to expedite things. But then again, it would be much more interesting if the characters had to rely on something more specific to their arsenal and their jutsus to run away in those situations. It's also stated in the wiki that the Raikage, you know, the fourth Raikage, uses the body flicker with his lightning chakra cloak, creating the lightning body flick, and that's what he uses to dodge Amaterasu and whatnot. But this doesn't really seem supported by any evidence in the manga. He just seems to be extremely fast using his taijutsu amped by the lightning style. It's not the body flicker jutsu, so I don't really put a lot of faith in that statement. But the main problem is that when characters are in difficult situations and they don't use the body flicker when they could have, then you're just going to scratch your heads and say, why didn't you just body flicker away like everyone else seems to be able to do when it's needed for them. For example, Choji, you have to go to Tsunari and report about Pain's abilities and there so happens to be a missile chasing you. Will you do A, body flicker away towards Tsunari's location, making yourself much faster than the missile and just escaping the battlefield, or B, run like a fat idiot waiting for Kakashi to sacrifice himself because he has to use Kamui to Kamui away the missile so to get exploded into bits. I don't don't know which one seems to be the better option here. Now you could say maybe Choji didn't know the body flicker technique, but it's a D rank technique. Any ninja should know that, especially because Choji was already a tune in by that point in the story. Also, like, you know, when Madara tosses two meteors on top of your battalion of shinobis, why do you just run away like fools instead of everyone just body flicker away of the meteor's impact zone and just not die? No, let's make Onoki and Gara do this Herculean effort and we're just gonna run away like you know normal people because even though we can all body flicker away from the meteor that strike we're not gonna do that because I don't know we're saving chakra or something it doesn't make much sense you know and you can't say they didn't have forewarning for that jutsu because they literally stared above them and they saw this meteor coming down and crashing down upon them it gave them plenty of time to react and just use the body flicker technique to get out of the room range. Or you know, when the Ten Tails launched a Bijudama strike against the headquarters of the Ninja Alliance, Inoichi and Shikaku just stayed there and waited to be destroyed by it, instead of body flickering away and surviving the strike and also, you know, surviving so they would be able to help the Alliance further. Now maybe you could say the strike was too massive, there was no way they were going to escape, but they could have at least tried? And I get that in that moment, their goal was to give the Alliance a final strategy to beat the Tentails Madara and Obito, but if they had survived, they could have done that more, you know? Because they would be alive? Or after Jiraiya confirmed the identity of Pain and what the hell was happening there, you know, the real one is not among them, why didn't he just, you know, body flicker away from the battlefield so that he is not stabbed by multiple Renegon rods? and killed. You see how the introduction of this jutsu makes things very complicated? Now, all of a sudden, you're gonna ask yourself whenever a character doesn't body flicker, wait, why didn't you just do that? It would have been very easy for you to escape that situation. And the answer is obviously because the plot requires those things to happen, but then you shouldn't have this jutsu in your story because it's actually diminishing the intelligence and the verisimilitude of the story itself. Including this jutsu the way it is in the story was a mistake by Kishimoto. Characters that needed to escape certain situations that use the body flicker to do that, you could have just come up with more creative solutions, as I mentioned before. And then there's also the travel problem, because you can use the body flicker to travel a long distance, and this would render a lot of situations during the series very useless and just kind of dumb. Like the sound 4, you just got Sasuke, you know, you have to take him back to Orochimaru during the Sasuke retrieval 
survival arc, are you one, going to just skip through the trees, or two, body flicker away towards Orochimaru's hideout? You know, use everything you have chakra-wise, just body flicker as far away as you can, maybe give Sasuke to the one who has the most chakra to do the body flicker and get to Orochimaru as soon as you can, because you just have to exit the land of fire and you'll be good. You're not gonna be pursued anymore, so just leave? But no, they don't body flicker, and you're gonna say, well, maybe they can't, but obviously they can. They use that jutsu to extract Orochimaru during the plot to destroy the leaf village after Orochimaru killed Hiruzen and got his arm sealed. Why don't you use that with Sasuke? Um, because the plot requires you to. And of course, there are instances where characters remember to use the body flicker technique, such as when the four Hokages are brought back during the fourth great ninja war, they use the body flicker technique to get quickly to the battlefield. And they were in the leaf village. It's a great distance between the battlefield and the leaf village. It's a well, characters took three days to travel from the leaf village to the sand village in the beginning of Naruto Shippuden, and the Hokages with the body flicker technique did it in like five minutes. Of course, they're Hokages, they should be even better than most at the body flicker jutsu, but you would figure that three days is much, much more than whatever any low level ninja would do with the body flicker jutsu. Why don't ninjas travel like that every time now? Maybe it's because of chakra expenditure, which is fair, sure. But then again, I've said before, there are characters like Naruto that don't really have to worry about that. And we never see a character traversing with the body flicker jutsu. When Kakashi had to go to find Sasuke when he receives the news that, oh, okay, Sasuke actually left the village and my very inexperienced Genin, you know, Naruto is going after him. Bad things can happen. I have to go as quickly as I can. He doesn't body flicker. He just goes, you know, speeding there. But still, he doesn't do the body flicker. It's very strange, isn't it? If you think from an in-universe perspective. Of course, Kakashi couldn't arrive there in time because the story had to go. Sasuke had to leave the village and go to Orochimaru. But having the body flicker kind of makes things bad. And I know why this jutsu exists. It's because in legend lore of shinobis in real life, there is this staple technique where they throw a smoke bomb or just powder and then the ninja disappears as though he vanished, completely teleporting away. He's so silent, nobody even saw where the shinobi went. And this is fine and all. I'm not against Kishimoto using real life inspiration, especially from real ninjas to use in a story about ninjas, but it worked much better for Kishimoto's original intent where Naruto was not even supposed to be that long of a series and the power system was not going to be that complicated, but then when Naruto became very popular and he was like, okay, I have to expand upon this thing, then the body flicker technique became a problem. Exactly how the substitution jutsu became a huge problem, and I've been in an entire video about that. Now, you could solve the problem of the body flicker by just deleting it from the story and making characters use more creative ways to escape the situations they were in, and so that traveling time actually matters, you know, instead of just, oh, yeah, I could have just body flickered and got here in five seconds, but I didn't for plot reasons. Or you could have made a more balanced jutsu. Perhaps you limit the range of the body flicker. Maybe you can only body flicker for like 10, 20, 30 meters per se. And then there's no more way for you to control your chakra. So you disappear from the original place you're in and the smoke strategy still works, but your enemy will know you're still in the vicinity and will have a chance to detect where you are. It's then up to you to decide what you're gonna do. Are you gonna try to actually run away or are you going to just reposition yourself and try to fight? And then on top of this distance limitation, you could impose a cooldown time to make this jutsu non-spammable, which, well, this is not the case because we see Shisui, for example, just spamming it non-stop. Now, we don't really see it in the anime or the manga, but we see it in the games and he was known for being the teleporter guy. So it's pretty likely he could spam the jutsu and it's also very much implied that you can sustain this jutsu for a long time to traverse entire continents. And on top of that, you could make this jutsu actually extremely hard to master, or at least a bit more difficult than it actually is, because in the way the jutsu is depicted in the story, even though you were to impose a cooldown limit and a range limit in it, it would still be extremely powerful because everybody can use it, and 
you're just gonna get our jail free card. Imagine, for example, you are targeted with this amazingly powerful jutsu, take particle style, or a marasu, or something very chakra taxing. You can just body flicker, dodging out of the way of this jutsu, and this would be a huge advantage for the one who body flicker because the chakra cost that you spend to body flicker is so much lower than the cost of the powerful jutsu that was targeting you that I don't know why characters just don't simply bait other characters into using their most powerful jutsus and they just body flicker away or even substitute but this is a topic for my other video and then you get to this meta in the shinobi world that nobody would even try to learn chakra heavy jutsus because people were just like body flickering away and substituting because there's no point in spending a lot of chakra in an attack that's obviously going to miss but let me know how would you fix the body flicker problem in naruto like this video if you enjoy my content and also subscribe if you haven't already those things really help me with the youtube algorithm also watch this other video right here for the substitution jutsu part of the story and thank you so much for watching